Oh, howdy all, grab yourself a beer, it's time for some Path of Exile discussion. 3.17 is making some significant changes to amulets. Uh, in particular, some of the mods that are very powerful that used to be influence mod only are being moved into the core amulet pool. This is going to break all existing amulet crafting guides, and I wanted to quickly go through the new version of how to craft plus two chaos spell skill gem amulets. Uh, this is a deterministic craft that's going to cost you about six exalts and maybe 500 to 1,000 alteration orbs on average. And it's something that, yeah, you can be 100% sure it will work before you start spending your exalted orbs on it. However, a uh, very important disclaimer, this is subject to change. This is a pre-launch discussion and new mods are sometimes added by GGG without patch note announcement. Before attempting this craft, I want you to understand why it works. That's really important because then you can tell if changes to the game have made it so that it will no longer work. So for example, if GGG were to move the Hunter exclusive mod, 0.3 to 0.5% of chaos damage is leached as life. If they were to move that out of the Hunter mod pool and into the core mod pool for amulets, uh, then this craft would no longer work. Likewise, I'd like you to be in a situation at the end of this video where you can, you can verify for yourself that this crafting method will not work on elder influenced amulets. So don't just follow the instructions, make sure you understand why they work and audit them once the patch is live to make sure that you don't end up wasting currency. So firstly, a couple of prerequisites. There are three bench crafts you need to unlock and they're special ones. These used to be linked to the prophecy system, but they were removed from that and they now have different locations. So you will need to complete the putrid cloister map, the unique map that will grant you the multi-mod, uh, that will grant you the multi-mod bench craft. You'll need to get complete Obus Cursed Trove, and that will grant you suffixes cannot change, and you'll need to complete the Coward's Trial to get prefixes cannot change. If you're having trouble getting those maps to drop, uh, Zana's missions in the past, so Kirax missions in the future, can be used to find a good number of unique maps. Additionally, you will need to either trade for or personally loot six Exalted Orbs to pay for all of the crafts you're gonna need in this. Ouch, that's a lot. Exalted Orbs are rare in Path of Exile, and most players won't have found six of them by themselves by the time they hit level 92. However, uh, you can always pick them up in trade from other players, albeit at a high cost, and you can make do with something else until you're able to afford this expensive endgame craft. So by the time the first exalt is used, there is no RNG dependence in the craft at all. Six is not just the average, six is the number that you will personally use exactly. Uh, you'll also expect to use hundreds of alteration orbs, and here you can get pretty unlucky and you might not get it with a thousand. Uh, optionally, you can also customize and improve this craft further with expensive imprint base. I'm not gonna go into that. Uh, if you know enough about crafting with imprint base, you're probably not that interested in a guide like this because you probably know enough about Harvest and Medimods to know how to do this craft anyway. So the interaction that we're gonna be using is Harvest, Reforge Plus and Metamods. Now on the screen, you can see a Harvest Reforge Plus critical craft. This is the only one that I had saved when I went to record this video. Uh, you want the chaos version of this craft. The chaos version of this craft is super common. When I say super common, maybe every fourth sacred grove that you go into will have, um, will have this and you won't just get one of them, you'll get two or three of them. So you are going to be using this, but we're gonna be using it in conjunction with prefixes cannot change and suffixes cannot change uh, in order to sharply constrain what can roll. So when a rare item has prefixes cannot change and suffixes cannot change on it, uh, that means that the uh, all of the existing mods on it will stay with Harvest Crafts. This craft will fail if the item already has six mods, but if the item has five mods, uh, and let's say that that's two prefixes and three suffixes, then it will have to add a chaos mod to the item because there's nothing else it can do. Uh, it must add a chaos mod if it's able to, and it will keep all of the existing mods on it. So that means that this effectively functions like the ultra, ultra, ultra rare augment crafts, but more than functioning like an augment craft, you can even use it on an influenced item if you want. Uh, so we're gonna engineer a situation where we have a five mod rare. This is going to be two prefixes and three suffixes where most of the mods are easily removed, but one that isn't easily removed is plus one to either dexterity spells, intelligence spells, or the 3.17 exclusive mod plus one to all spell skill gems that's being added in. So that's gonna be a prefix on the item. The other prefix will be something that's easily removed and the suffixes we won't care about because we can remove those later on when we're trying to optimize the craft further. So our setup phase, uh, this is RNG heavy. This will take a thousand alteration orbs sometimes, uh, although often less than that. So firstly, you're gonna to wanna to source your amulet base. 
Uh, it needs to be at least the minimum item level requirement to roll both plus one to attribute spell skills and also plus one to chaos spell skill gems. At the time I'm recording this, that's 82 on the live service. Who knows what it'll be in 3.17? Make sure that you research that uh, as soon as that information gets data mined, which is likely going to be about two or three hours after the league comes out. Don't skimp on the item base. Uh, if a citrine amulet or a marble amulet is best for your build, then make sure you use that. Don't go for a budget uh, of using an onyx amulet or, uh, or a lapis amulet instead. Use whatever is best for your build. A goal of our step is going to be to have a rare item with exactly one prefix, exactly one suffix, and that prefix is to be plus one to the level of all dexterity skill gems. So we're going to create this by alteration spamming until we get a one mod or a two mod amulet with the desired prefix. And then from there, it's RNG. We're going to regal the item. And if we end up in a situation where we've got two prefixes and one suffix, we're going to apply annulment orbs. At this point, we have a one in three chance of actually winning, i.e. getting into the desired state by removing the undesired prefix. We have a one in three chance to move into a two prefix zero suffix situation. And we have a one in three situation to a uh, chance to destroy the item uh, by removing the dexterity spell skill gems. If that happens, scour it, transmute it, and repeat. Second situation we can be in is two prefixes and zero suffixes. In this situation, we are going to use a beast craft, remove prefix, add a suffix. We are 50% to destroy the item, need to scour it and start over, and we are 50% to win. Our third possibility is that we have one prefix and two suffixes. Uh, in this case, we go for an RNG annulment orb. Uh, we're 67% chance to win at this point, and this is actually the most likely situation to find ourselves in after applying the regal orb. We could also already be there. Uh, we could have one prefix, one suffix. If that's the case, fantastic. So in trade leagues, mostly, there is an alternative too, and that is to buy amulets from other players that already have plus one attribute skills rolled upon them. Then you can use RNG and annulment orbs to get them into either, a, whichever comes first, a two prefix zero suffix state or a one prefix one suffix state. Uh, doing this might wreck the item. You might not uh, You might not reach this point. You might remove plus one dexterity or plus one intelligence spell skills before getting to that point. If that happens, bad luck. Uh, you've ruined the item. Trade for another one and start over. The best amulets to use for this are going to be one prefix three suffix ones, as these will have a 50% chance to get into the desired state before you destroy them. The worst is six mod items, which will be a four in 15 chance to win. Uh, if you hit a two, a two prefix zero suffix state, again, you're going to just want to go for that 50-50 shot on the beastcraft, remove a prefix, add a suffix. You might even be able to do this in SSF if you ID all of the amulets that you drop of the desired base type, uh, but you will be constrained by orbs of annulment in this situation. So preparing for Reforge Plus is really simple. Uh, all we need to do is throw money at the problem. Firstly, we're going to apply multi-mod. Now, it is very important. Uh, this is a mistake that everyone makes exactly once in their Path of Exile playing career. Uh, you want to make sure that multi-mod is the first one you apply, because if you don't, you're not going to be able to apply multi-mod. So can have up to three crafted modifiers is the mod that players call multi-mod. Uh, you need to apply that first. If you were to apply prefixes cannot be changed first, then when you went to apply can have up to three crafted modifiers, uh, you would actually have to remove prefixes cannot be changed in order to do that. And in doing so, you would have just flushed two exalted orbs down the toilet. It's an expensive mistake. Like I say, it's one everyone makes exactly once, uh, but try to avoid it if you can. After that, once you've got three crafted modifiers on it, uh, up to three crafted modifiers, you then just craft prefixes can't be changed and suffixes can't be changed, and you've prepared it. At this point, Reforge Plus, and the only thing that can roll is our desired mod, plus one to the level of all chaos spell skill gems. Now you'll notice if you look closely at this, because it's currently based on 3.16 crafting methods, uh, they say that they're hunter mods. They're not hunter mods anymore. They are something that are in the normal pool. Uh, as a little bit of an extra meme value here, you can actually apply chaos orbs. Now that you're in this situation where you've got a six mod item with, whose prefixes and suffixes cannot be changed, uh, you can just spam chaos orbs to randomly re, uh, to re-randomize the name. So if you want to try and get something name like Apocalypse Talk, then you can try and do that here. Uh, this has no value beyond just being silly, but it is a bit of fun. Uh, okay, so there's no other valid mod pool, mods that can roll here, so you are guaranteed to get plus one Chaos Spell Skill Gems at the time that I am recording this video. 
There would be valid chaos suffixes, but they can't be added because the item has three suffixes and those suffixes cannot be removed. That's the reason that we went for three suffixes, oh, sorry, that we made sure that we had one prefix and one suffix at the time that we, uh, that we progressed beyond the regal orb state. For further crafting options, you can use the item as it is until you can amass another two exalts. Then you can multi-mod it and put two desired crafts on it. So you can't salvage the... This currently has uh, multi-mod already on it, but also has two other mods. Uh, prefixes can't be changed, suffixes can't be changed. Any means of removing prefixes can't be changed and suffixes can't be changed will also remove the multi-mod. And so if you do want to go with a multi-mod approach, you're going to need to throw a new multi-mod on it, which is another two exalts. Uh, so you can use the item as it is until you can afford to do that, then multi-mod it, then just craft out whatever else is good on it. Uh, I would often suggest going a good life roll and a good resist, uh, but that may not be the right choice for your build, and I'll let you make that decision yourself. Or you can remove the bench crafts, then you can craft prefixes cannot change, and then you can apply an Ashling crafting bench. When you do this, this will force a veiled suffix. Uh, the reason it will force a Veiled suffix is that one of the existing mods will be transformed into a Veiled mod, and the prefixes aren't valid choices because they're protected by prefixes cannot change. That means that the Ashling, mod, uh, that the Ashling Crafting Bench will either remove prefixes cannot change, or it will remove the, whatever your other mod is. In this case, it's a quite good tier fire resistance, but your luck might be different. Our veiled suffixes are really good, so this is a strong option. Or another thing you can do is you can put prefixes cannot change, then you can apply a Veiled Chaos Orb to add one to three mods at random, uh, and of those one to three mods, exactly one will be a powerful Veiled mod. Whatever you do, don't forget to apply Catalyst as soon as you can afford them. Uh, choose one that ones that play to the strengths of the other mods on the item, uh, both the implicit and the other explicit mods, because there's nothing you can do to scale plus one to gem levels beyond plus one. Uh, adding 20% to that makes it plus 1.2, but the game rounds that down to plus 1 anyway. Also make sure that you anoint the item ASAP and then save up for your perfect anoint. One thing I think you should at least consider doing, most of you will decide not to go ahead with this, but it is worth thinking about, is Jorgen's Talisman Transformation. Uh, talismans have never been something that you could get with plus 1 to the level of two different spell skill gems in the past, couldn't even get them with one. Uh, this is going to make talismans much, much, much better because talisman implicits are sometimes pretty good. Uh, this is not going to make talismans that you pick up off the ground any good. They'll still be rubbish. But talismans that you craft using Jorgen's Talisman Transformation Bench in the Syndicate Research Division could actually be pretty good. Uh, if you were to take a, uh, if you were to take something like this crafting project, and then you were to turn it into a talisman, uh, you could end up with something really excellent. Make sure that you don't do this unless the item already has six mods and ideally six actual real mods. So not, um, not things like uh, can have up to three crafted modifiers. I think you want to go for something that has better mods than that. But once you do, uh, if you do hit a good talisman, there are a couple of them in the pool and they can be really good. Anyways, that's all I got for that. May your have interesting results and I will see you around uh, with more coverage of the 3.17 hype season.